Denmark Street is the first place you think of as a guitarist. You know what I mean? You, you, you like guitar, you go to Denmark Street. It's London's Tin Pan Alley, birthplace of melodies which have kept Britain singing in good times and in bad. Just 60 yards of plate glass windows behind which a million new songs have been heard. The street itself obviously has had many famous people record here, that sort of thing. We've had Jimi Hendrix and um, uh, Black Sabbath record over at Regent Sounds. They had a famous studio over there. My name's Crispin Weir. I am the owner of Regent Sounds and uh, yeah, it's been here for a while now. A lot of very famous people from you know the, the 40s and the 50s did a lot of recordings here and then by the 60s it kind of had a new life when a lot of the young kind of British bands started using it. Uh, the Rolling Stones stumbled on it and found it really cheap and they loved the sound of it so they they had a lot of control here so they started they made their first two records here they made the first album in its entirety in about 90 percent of the second record and their first EP. it stopped being a studio, I think sort of late 80s. From the 70s onwards it became associated as a place for guitars and guitar shops opened and then you know throughout the 80s and 90s it's just been synonymous with guitars. You don't get to see you know some of the people that you aspire to in some random job somewhere but you'll get it here because this is like the epicenter of you know that old music history and you still get plenty of people coming here. Whenever I'm in London, like around the West End or around Soho, I, I always used to just walk up and down the street looking at all the guitars and trying stuff out and be like, ooh, this, it's so cool, man, like there's nowhere else like it. I would say my personal favourite thing is the community. There's a real community around the street, not just people that work here, but kind of like friends of the street, this whole kind of uh, revolution of musicians that passes through. So many people have cut their teeth on the street, you know, so many people have kind of made their way into music via the street, you know what I mean? And I love them. The wood grain has cracked through the surface. So, uh, yeah, I've got to fill it up and I've got to scrape it down and refinish it. So. Is it like an easy process? Most no, of that's, not, that's not very easy. Um, a little bit of it has actually gone through. So I've, uh, I've mm. just popped a piece of little strut of wood on the inside there. So you have to use magnets for that, as you can see, just to keep it up inside there. Uh, once that's dried out, then I've got, to, uh, I've got to start scraping the surface off the filling that I've put on there. And then after that, it's got to be buffed down. So it's, Quite mm -hmm. a process, yeah. That's cool. Tedious. Like, how many do you repair, like, a day? Um, I've actually just been shipped in from, from Cape Town now. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I've taken over from um, the regional cars we yeah. And uh, uh, it's my first, second week, actually, that I've started. Last week was pretty busy. Yeah, we're just we're busy revamping, get the place to look a little bit better, get some, I don't know, posters and stuff up eventually. <laughs> but um, as they come in, they come in quick, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, you can be ending up setting up about five guitars a day, maybe ten if, you, oh, wow. if you're fast like me. Huh? If you're fast like me. <laughs> <laughs> it is a hard time for music venues in London at the moment. People aren't seeing... Um, like they aren't really going to as many small shows as they used to do um, and so it's been a big deal over the past like 10 years ago this place called the 100 club which i also i work nights there um, they were going under and they got saved by paul mccartney and uh, converse the shoes came in and were like hey you're an iconic venue we'll help finance you we'll help get you back on your feet in all honesty i think it'll go i think all the music shops will close including us. Um, uh, basically because we sell a lot of guitars here and we make a very good living. Uh, oh, we do a lot of business, but paying the overheads is virtually impossible. It's so difficult to run an independent store here. We're forced out by 
the rents from coffee shops, by what people call brands, running shops mm -hmm. now. And don't get me wrong, I'm not bitter about it. I understand it's change and we have to do something else. Um, I think it's interesting. Because I think it's got so many places it can go. Um, as far as I know, the Camden Council have told the landlord that he's only allowed to let to music-based vendors, so it's not going to come Starbucks or you know Pret anytime soon, which is nice. Um, there's some amazing music venues opening up on the street again, so kind of bringing um, musicians, you know, back to their natural habitat, creating an atmosphere for people that necessarily aren't just guitarists. Um, I think I would like to see the street kind of grow into a new era. Like, it's amazing that we have so much heritage, but it would be nice to see where it goes next. It would be nice to see people use the street, you know what I mean? I think it would be pretty silly to say that the shops aren't going to survive. I think, I think there's every reality we will. Um, the landlords have certainly shown that that's what their intent is. They want us to be here or else they would have got rid of us years ago. So there's every intent to make it work and make it into a thriving music place. There'll be a degree of commercialization. And you know, there'll be a lot of people here who aren't necessarily musicians. But you just gotta try and deal with, you know, tourists and people who are interested in music and musicians in two different ways, which is easily done. Uh, but yeah, we're still hopefully just gonna be the little shops are gonna be still be able to stay here and the street will still be known for what it does, for being synonymous with selling instruments, uh, giving good advice to musicians, and then at night there'll be a lot of venues again. Whether or not it maintains a strictly music street forever, uh, I, my hope is that it will and that anybody who like buys real estate here is aware of the history of it and they'll kind of respect that.